Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com, and in this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how you can create user accounts with PowerShell for Active Directory based off an Excel spreadsheet or any comma separated value spreadsheet. Okay, it's not just Excel, it can work with anything that you can export to a CSV file type. Now, what you're looking at here is a list of 10 users, and it contains information about like their job title, office phone, email address, etc. It also contains the destination organizational unit of where this user is going to go. Now, every once in a while, you'll get a list like this from your boss and they'll say, I need a new, uh, you know, these user accounts need to be created and they need to be put in the appropriate OUs and we need it done, you know, in a day or in two days or something like that, or sometimes maybe in an hour. And it would take a lot of time to go through Active Directory, create a new user account, place them in the appropriate OU, enter in this description, their email address, phone number, job title, and all that and then doing that with the GUI for all 10 of these users. Now, what if imagine if you had about 75 or 100 people that you had to create. I once worked in an office space where we had classrooms and all the new students needed user accounts. And this was about classrooms of about 40 to 50 people. And it would cycle every two weeks. So I was constantly creating new user accounts for all the new students who would be coming in. And I can tell you for a fact that this is a pain. So you can script this in PowerShell and make your life much easier. So. A couple things to keep in mind is that we're not going to be saving this as an Excel spreadsheet file. We're going to be saving this as a CSV in Excel. You hit file, you hit save as, and then you choose under the type here, you choose comma separated values or comma delimited. You can add more information if you'd like. I will be showing you how to, uh, you know, add in different columns if you'd like to. Uh, for example, you could include something, you know, other than the description or, or phone number, or email address. So if you go to TechNet and you look at the new AD user, here's a list of everything that you can specify in Active Directory. You can specify the city, the company they work for, their county, you know, their uh, division, employee ID, fax number, you know, uh, all this information you can specify if you would like. But I just stuck with the bare basics, first name, last name, uh, job title, office, email address, description, and the organizational unit. Now, obviously, you're not going to be given this OU uh, right off the bat when, you know, a hiring manager or someone is telling you you need these new accounts. This is something you're going to have to get yourself. And that's pretty easy to do, like I showed you. If you haven't watched my other video about creating users in Active Directory with PowerShell, I recommend you do that now, but I'll just show it to you real quick. First, in Active Directory, I have the console open here, and I'm going to enable advanced features. And I have an OU structure here called IT Fleet, and then I have administrators, and I have office. So if I right click on one of these OUs and I choose properties and I go to attribute editor, the distinguished name is the OU path that we're going to be looking at. So that's this option right here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is start by understanding how to edit or how to read this CSV file in PowerShell. So I'm going to close out of this Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to minimize this and we're going to open the PowerShell ISE. So the first thing that we're going to do is when we're working with Active Directory is we need to import the required modules. So we're going to say that in a comment and we're going to call the, the first line that we're going to write is import module and we're going to import active directory. So all one word. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is get the file path from the user. So we're going to ask them to enter the destination or where the file is located that we're trying to open and trying to read. So we'll say prompt user for CSV file path. Okay, and we're going to assign this to a variable called file path. So file path is equal to, and if you remember, the read host command is the command that allows us to get user input and store it in a variable. Now we're going to add a prompt and we're going to say, please enter the path to your CSV file. And we'll hit in quotation marks. All right, now we're going to load that file into a variable and we're going to call this variable user. So let's just call this, uh, this comment. We're going to say, we're going to import the file into a variable. Okay. And this variable is going to be called users. And we're going to say user is equal to, and we're going to use a command import dash CSV. And then the CSV file that we're going to specify is going to be the file path. So we're importing active directory. We're getting the file path from the user by reading the host. And then once we have that file path, we're going to import the CSV into this variable called users. All right. So let's go ahead and just give this a test. Make sure we don't have any errors in our code. I'm going to hit the play button. 
and we're going to prom be prompted to enter the path to our CSV file. Now let's open Windows Explorer and I have mine on the C drive. You can find this file under the resources section of this lecture, as well as that link to the TechNet article that lists all the arguments and everything you can do with this command. So under resources, you'll find this new users.csv. We're gonna right click on this file and choose edit. And we can see this is the same exact information we're looking at in uh, Excel. So we have first name at the top, last name, job title, et cetera. And then this is the list of users. So it's under the C drive and then it's new users.csv. So I'm gonna type in uh, capital C colon backslash new users.csv. And we'll press enter. And okay, so we didn't get any errors, so that's good. All right, the next thing we need to do and this is really simple. I mean, we're, we're literally almost done with this code. Now we need to loop through each column or each row of the CSV file. So if I pop this open, I'll explain. We're gonna use a for each command. And what that will do is once we import this CSV file, this first section or this first line will be considered a header. Next, it's gonna go and loop through each of these lines. And we're gonna be able to call out particular information from each line, like the first name or the last name and we'll be able to store all that information so we can write one line of code to create a new, one new user account and apply it to each of these lines. It'll make more sense in a second. So let's just go ahead and start. And we're gonna call this, this uh, comment is gonna say loop through each row and gather information. Okay, so again, we're gonna use a command for each. And now we have to specify what we're gonna call each variable. So we're gonna say for each user in users. And that's also a variable. And then we're gonna do an opening bracket and a close bracket, okay? All right, so let me explain what's going on. So each one of these lines, let me pull this over to the side so we can see what's going on here. All right. Each one of these lines is gonna be considered uh, a user. So in the file users, which is this whole file, we're gonna have a user and each user will be like one of these lines. So we're gonna specify a certain amount of actions that need to be completed for each user. And it's gonna loop down just like this. So it's gonna go down the file, oops, one line at a time. And we're gonna be able to grab the first name, last name of each user, et cetera. Also all the information we're specifying, we're gonna be able to grab all of that. And it's gonna do it all one at a time, okay? So let's start by just figuring out how do we get each column. So we, first thing we're gonna start with is the first name because that's the first thing in this document. So we want to start by grabbing this information. And the way we do that is first make a comment and call it gather the information. We'll say gather the user's information. Okay, and we're gonna come up with line and we're gonna say, we're gonna go with our normal variables like we've been doing before. We're gonna call it F name or first name. And we're gonna say is equal to we're gonna call this variable at the top here. So is equal to user because we're going to a particular line. Okay, and then we're gonna say dot, and we're gonna say, and we can see right here, it's it's being listed for us. So if we say dot first name, and press enter, and now we can see that if we echo this out, this variable f name, and hit run, we're gonna see that it's gonna echo the first name of every user go, starting from Mike and ending with Ernest. All right, so let's give it a shot. Let's hit play, and we're again C drive backslash new users.csv. And here in the output, we can see, let me pull this up a little bit. We can see that we started with Mike here at the top and we ended with Ernest. So it's going through each line and it's outputting the first name, okay? So you can kind of see how we can grab each one of these variables and we can create a new user account, all right? Because it's completing this, this line, this little block of code for each line in the CSV file. All right, now let's go ahead and grab more information. So we're gonna grab the last name or we're gonna call it L name. Okay, and that is equal to user dot. And let's go down through this list here and with last name we'll press enter or tab. Okay, now we have job title. We'll call this J title equal to user dot job title. And this information, this job title and description is being automatically populated. So any CSV file that you have, it will have this information for you. If you do not see this information, you may need to run the script once and load the file into memory. I'm not entirely sure on that one. So I'm just gonna press enter. And also, 
Notice that it's putting it in quotation marks. If my variables were in, uh, were, didn't have a space, you would not need the quotation marks. So if, if it was like dot last name if, in the CSV file, then let me get that right. It could be written just like this. But since we have a space, we need to wrap everything in quotation marks, okay? All right, so next thing we need to get, if we look at this document file, so we have first name, we have the last name, we have the job title, and then we have the office phone. So that's gonna be the next thing we're gonna grab. We'll call this office phone equals user dot office phone, okay? And we can just echo out this input if we'd like. So let's just do that and check what we've got going on here. We'll do job title, J title, sorry. And then office phone. Okay, now let's just hit play and see what happens. So I'm gonna type in the C drive, new, new users CSV. I'm not sure if this is cap sensitive, it's not. Okay, so we can see that it's outputting the information. So we have starting with Mike, Terry, it's, oops. Let's go over here. Starting with Mike, Terry, we have the office manager and his phone number, okay? So we need to keep going on down. The next one is going to be the email address. Equals user dot email address. And if you're getting a little bit confused about what I'm opening, I'll just pop this open and show you in the spreadsheet. That new text document might be a little bit confusing. If I bring this out, I'll bold this first line for us. So it's going through uh, each one of these lines over here. And we just need to call out these top little headers. And that's all we're doing right now. So we just did dot email address. The next one we're going to do is dot description. Okay. So I'll minimize that. Okay, so now we have description equals user dot description. And you can see it didn't wrap it in quotation marks because we do not have any spaces in the header, okay, or in that heading. All right, so now we have the OU path. That's the very last variable we need to get. So OU path equals user dot O organizational unit, okay? All right, so now we have all the users. Now, believe it or not, all we need to do is add the new AD user command. And then we're gonna change this echo down here. So I'm gonna change this to account created for F name, L name, and OU path. Okay, so once we create the user account, it's gonna say that, hey, we've created the user account for you know Mike Terry in this following OU path. And we'll put a comment in there and just say, echo output for each new user. Okay, we'll go down a couple lines and now we're gonna make this line create the AD user, create new, sorry, new AD user for each user in CSV file, okay? All right, so this command again, if you remember, is new dash AD user. And the first argument is going to be the name and that's gonna be, oops, let's get this in quotation marks, F name space L name in quotation marks. And then we gotta go with a given name. And that's gonna be F name. Then we have the surname. Oops, hitting all kinds of wrong buttons here. There we go, surname. And that'll be L name. All right, now we have the user principal name, which is their user account name. And this will be in quotation marks. In quotation marks, it'll be F name, oops, F name dot L name. All right, now we need to specify the path, and this is going to be the OU path. OU path. And account password. And that is going to be secure password, which I don't think we have actually created yet. So we're going to have to make sure we go up and do that last. All right, now change password at logon. This is totally up to you. I'm going to say uh, true because anytime I make a new account, you know, I want them to change the password. We've talked about that before. Okay, office phone number is going to be office phone. And you notice I'm using the tab completion a lot. That's really, really important that you keep using this uh, tab completion. It keeps you from making mistakes and stuff like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the description, and that'll be description. And enabled equals true. That's the last thing we need to do. Okay. Okay, and it looks like I didn't add the email address, so I'm just gonna go back here and make sure I add the email address. It doesn't matter what order you do this stuff in as long as you get it in there. So we're just gonna say email address. And now we are good to go.
So now we need to go back and create the password and then we're done with this one. So we're ready, we'll be ready to test it at least. So I'm gonna go up here and uh, create a new password. All right, now you could do, you could have your, you know, prompt the administrator to type in a new password for them. I'm not gonna do that uh, because it's just too much work. You could also have the user put in, create a new password for each individual user in this for loop. So if I created a section here saying, you know, read host, please enter the new password. Every time I'd have to enter a new password for every new user that was created. You could also randomly generate the password and uh, output that in clear text so that it'd be different for everyone if you would like. Uh, but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna give everyone the same password uh, just to keep things simple. So we're gonna call this secure password and that's gonna be equal to convert to dash secure string. And we're gonna say test, use the same old, same old pass word with a zero and an exclamation mark. And we're gonna say as plain text and force. Okay, so now we're ready to save this command. So we'll hit, or save this code. So let's save this to the desktop and call it create users from CSV. Not a very original name, but that's fine. So I'm gonna hit save and we'll close out of this. And let's just minimize out of these uh, windows we have open here. And let's right click and run with PowerShell. Okay, enter the path to our CSV file and we're gonna say new users.csv, press enter. Okay, so we can see that it created a bunch of accounts. If we hit F5 in these OUs, now we can see that the new accounts have been created. So they have their description. If we open up one of these, we can see they have their email address populated, their phone number, their description, and all that good stuff. They have their username in here and we are good to go. So if you wanna download the script, you don't wanna write it yourself, it's under the attached resources. Uh, I hope you guys find this uh, interesting. It definitely is interesting for me. I love doing stuff like this. Yeah, so I encourage you guys to go ahead and play around with the script. For example, try making the user input a password before creating you know, a password for each user. And also you can go inside this for loop and generate a random password for the user. Uh, that would be kind of cool. And then you can output it in clear text uh, so that you can read it. And then you would need to pause it before the command ended. So down here, you'd want to say pause. Uh, but I recommend that you play around with this. Add more information from that TechNet website that I sent you. You could do employee ID. Uh, you can, you know, change this uh, home page, home phone. Uh, well, I guess we already have that in there. But um, you can change the office, you know, other name, all that stuff. So I recommend that you go through here, find some of these other fields and add them in yourself so that you get a better understanding of what you're doing. Uh, it's really fun to just play around with this stuff. It can come in super handy when you have, you know, a ton of people that you have to create accounts for. But I think you have a basic understanding of how you call a header. So you should be able to take your own Excel spreadsheets and just, you know, create scripts based off them. It'll really come in handy later on. And that's all we need to do in this lesson. Sorry, I know this lesson was a lot longer than what I normally make, but I hope you found the information useful and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making the lesson for you and I'm looking forward to making more like this. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.